front of you. The Danish landed on this island 1609. Way back. You see my friend from Denmark. Before the advent of the Suez Canal in Egypt. The only sea route from Europe to India was down the coast of South Africa. The Dutch, the English, the French and the Danish battled it out here. Who should take control of South Africa? The very first political prisoner to rob an island. 1653, gentlemen, the very last to have left the island a free man, 1991. So you can imagine what happened in between these two dates. But at the end of the day, we will have to come back to the rest of the world and say thank you to you. During the days of our struggle for freedom, it was your countrymen who came back, supported us in the struggle, brought us where we are today, at least to tell the story. Young South Africans, never to forget, many of our friends, our comrades, whites, Indians, blacks, coloreds, died in combat by the thousands. We are the fortunate ones to have come back alive to come and tell the story. Now you see this little house opposite me with a red roof top on. The smallest prison in the entire world. Only one man was kept in that prison. The man who started the revolution in this country, 96. The man the old government feared very much, if not the most. South Africans, his name, also, Robert Sibupe. Robert Sibupe was not kept with all the other prisoners. He was kept so alone in this little house. <laughs> the cages around the house, those were dark kennels. But the dark kennels were built after he started. It was only the single house on the entire plot of land. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cut a very long story short. During the days of our struggle for freedom, we had two mainstream resistance revolutionary movements in this country. <coughs> the one is the ANC, where Mr. Mandela is a member of, and then the other one, the PAC, Pan-Africanist Congress, where this man, Sabukwe, was the leader of. On the 21st of March, 1960, which is today, a sacred day in our calendar, public holiday, Human Rights Day. It was on that day, the 21st of March, 1960, 51 years ago, when this man, Subukwe, brought the entire country to a standstill. Thousands were arrested. <coughs> Hundreds got killed. The entire country was in a total chaos. The army had to be called in. And it was on that day, 51 years ago, when government realized People are now prepared to die for their freedom, facing the bullets. When government realized their determination of the people, facing the bullets for their freedom, they quickly reopened Roman Island for political prisoners after the Second World War. And they immediately built the prison of death <coughs> 51 years ago. They arrested Bukwe too, then. 200 of its inmates were hanged. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it was a terrible day in the history of South Africa. Sabukwe was given a three-year sentence, which he first served on the mainland, that's Johannesburg. But when his three years were over 1963, the situation in this country was so explosive, they could not afford Sabukwe's freedom. 
at the time of his arrest, he was a professor at Wits University, linguistics language. Out of fear that the professor might start another outbreak, <coughs> they brought him to the island. And because he already served his sentence on the mainland, they couldn't mix him with the other prisoners. They put him in that little house, so alone. He was not allowed to talk <coughs> to anyone. They say the third year, when Sabukwe was eventually visited in there, his vocal cords, stem bunder, affected by not talking. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why is 21st of March so sacred in our calendar? Public holiday, Human Rights Day. It was on that day, 251 years ago, that the eyes of the world opened upon South Africa. My friend from Indian Front, the very first country to step in support, India. It was the Indian government first who took the South African case to the United Nations, Expo South Africa and its vicious apartheid policies to the rest of the world. Then the Dutch did it. Now I've been to the Netherlands myself in the 1960s. I remember very well. Before entering the supermarket down there in Leiden, an anti-apartheid movement person was standing on the outside with a stack of stickers. You take your sticker, straight into the supermarket, straight to the South African outspan oranges, you remember? <laughs> You take your st sticker, you place it over the orange, over the fruit. And written on that sticker was, if you eat this orange, it would be as if you're correct, lady. It would be as if you suck the blood of a black man. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the start of sanctions against South Africa. The entire world immediately refused to trade with South Africa. Then the Irish stepped in. In Ireland. There's a supermarket chain called the Gun Stores. You perhaps know the story. Mm -hmm. On one rainy day, box loads of South African goods entered one of the stores. The entire workforce came to a standstill. They refused to work unless they remove all South African goods from the shelves. Many of those young Irish ladies lost their jobs for our freedom down here. Never shall we fail to mention their names. The biggest anti-apartheid movement in the world, mushroom in the city Vancouver, Canada. Big marches in your cities against apartheid. 1982, UBC students invited me to give a talk at your country. The English stepped in. The Australians stepped in. Now the other part of the, my friend from Wales, the other part of the fight against the old government, in those days, you could have been the best of athletes, the best of sportsmen. If you are not <clears throat> white, you cannot make the national team of the country apartheid. Immediately after the Sabukwe uprise, when these all white rugby springbok teams would go to Twickenham in England, if you remember, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, Cardiff's Arms Park, Wales, Lanza Road, <coughs> Ireland. It was your communities that would invade the pitches, disrupt the South African games, the start of the Olympic boycotts against South Africa. South Africa was immediately kicked out of the international sports arena. The very first European country that has refused to send a soccer team to South Africa, our friends from Germany, because teams here, which you chosen on your colour, not your strength or your merit. My friend from Wales, my English friends, the man who initiated the sports boycotts on our behalf. Not too long ago, he was Secretary of State in Wales. His name? Peter. Hain. Peter Hain. Great man in our struggle. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, all your writing songs. The limestone 
quarry. It is in this quarry where Mr. Mandela and all the leaders were. And the leadership were never more than 30 at a time. <coughs> Mr. Mandela worked in this quarry 13 long years. Now the limestone was used to build the roads on which we are traveling today. But what was very bad working this quarry was a reflection of the brightness of the lime upon the eyes. And they would not allow dark glass except the last two years. Ladies and gentlemen, for five minutes outside this bus without your dark glass, we get out of here. For five minutes outside this bus without your dark glass, it's unbearable. Many of them turned snow blind, half blind. Up to today, when you take a photograph of Mr. Mandel, you're not allowed to use a flash of your camera because the gland that supplied the tear to his eye dried up in the process. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in this quarry where they help one another to further their education. Now, one of the many fights against the old government, education for the black man, in this country those days, was almost zero. So many of them came down here that could not even read or write. But when they left here, the after 10 years, 20 years, remember some spent a lifetime, would leave this island with two or three university degrees. Those of them who were teachers, the fortunate ones, lawyers, advocates, and harms, help the education of the less fortunate with world pleasure, especially International Red Cross, International Amnesty Canada, put tremendous pressure on the old government forced the old government by international law to allow education for the prisoners on this island. So after 1966, prisoners could further their education via correspondence schools, University of South Africa, and in particular University London. Now University London played a meaningful role in the education of the prisoners on this island. Ladies and gentlemen, even the guards came down for education, and only white guards. Now, those of you who are not from South Africa, you must have heard of our political buzzword in this country, and that is reconciliation. For the sake of those who are not from South Africa, the bottom line definition of the word reconciliation in our language is Forgiveness and do not take revenge on the white people. Where did it start? In the quarry year. When the old white guards came down for education. Mr. Mandela had this approach. Mr. Mandela would tell his fellow inmates, let us not fight these young white guards. Because they too are all victims of a vicious society. And Mr. Mandela would rather say, let us rather bring them down, bring them closer to our chest, and it worked. And with the help of the political prisoners, the guards too, when they left the island, would leave the island with two or three university degrees. Now this is what we claim, after 500 years of struggle, the starting point of reconciliation in this country, forgiveness and do not take revenge. But my friend from the, from the USA, my young American lady, you know, whenever Mr. Mandela comes back to the island, he would always tell us and say, the word reconciliation, forgiveness and do not take revenge, is not his word. He borrowed that word from another great civil rights leader from America, none other than, you say, lady, Martin Luther King. But if you in turn study the doctrines and the philosophy of Martin Luther King again, 
He intend would say, no, that's not his word either. He borrowed that word from another great politician that was arrested in South Africa. Maybe not in prison on the island, but in prison on the mainland. You take another guess. Thank you very much, my friend from the back. None other than Mahatma Gandhi. Mm. My mm. friend from India. Mm. I really expected the answer much quicker from you. <laughs> 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 today, my friends, we can easily claim that this country, South Africa, today, after 500 years of struggle, is floating on the philosophy of the three M's. The philosophy of that of Mahatma Gandhi. Forgiveness and do not take revenge. Martin Luther King, Mandela. This is where this country is heading now in a moment. In short, my friends, what I really try to get across to you, feel extremely honored. You're actually standing now on a campus of a university.